Throughout history, the Arctic has claimed the lives of countless explorers embarking on perilous journeys in search of discovery, and today we're discussing some of the most horrific failed expeditions into the frozen tundra. Lost ships, mysterious deaths and disappearances, cannibalism, it's all here. Anyone else uh, ready for winter? I am not, especially after putting this list together. I'm your host James, and these are the top 10 mysterious Arctic expeditions people never returned from. And we're starting off this list with probably the most famous disastrous Arctic trek, Franklin's Lost Expedition. John Franklin was to lead an expedition to discover the Northwest Passage, a route between the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans passing through the Arctic Ocean above Canada. There were two ships deployed, the HMS Terror and HMS Erebus, with around 129 crew altogether. They left England in 1845, never to return. Both ships ended up getting trapped in the Canadian Arctic. The crew were completely stranded. Franklin died in June of 1847, but some of the crew managed to survive until April of 1848. Some attempted to venture onto land to survive, but none of them ever made it back home. It was later discovered that some of the crew resorted to cannibalism in a desperate attempt to survive. It wasn't until recently that their actual ships were discovered. The Erebus was found in 2014, and the Terror discovered in 2016. Next up, we have the Carluck Expedition. The Carluck Expedition was a polar journey led by Wilhelmer Stephenson in 1913. Their goal was to explore the Arctic and collect scientific data. The ship Carluck got trapped in ice off the northern coast of Alaska. The crew faced very harsh conditions and struggled to survive. As the ice flow drifted, they were separated from their supplies and the ship eventually sank. Stephenson left to search for help, leaving the crew under the command of Maurice Koenig. Koenig tried to lead the remaining crew members to safety, but disagreements arose amongst the group. Some members decided to strike out on their own, while others stayed with Koenig. Tragically, several members died due to exposure and starvation, and over time, the surviving crew members became divided into two different groups. A group led by Koenig managed to reach Wrangell Island, where they were eventually rescued by a ship. Another group, including a scientist, was also rescued separately. However, some crew members were never found and presumed lost at sea. Number eight, the Lady Franklin Bay Expedition. The Lady Franklin Bay Expedition, also known as the Greeley Expedition, began in 1881, led by Lieutenant Adolphus Greeley. The mission aimed to gather scientific data in the Arctic. The team established a scientific research station at Lady Franklin Bay in northern Canada, but due to supply shortages and harsh weather conditions, the expedition faced serious challenges. In 1883, a supply ship failed to reach them, leaving the group stranded and started getting lower on food. And eventually the crew members began to die from hypothermia and starvation. In an attempt to survive, Greeley and his crew embarked on a treacherous journey southward. They faced extreme cold and had to resort to eating their own sled dogs in order to stay alive. Rescue parties were dispatched, but the extreme conditions made rescue very difficult. And only a few members of the original team were able to survive. When they were finally discovered in 1884, they were in a very dire state. And at number seven, we have the Polaris Expedition. In 1871, a crew led by Charles Francis Hall set off on a mission to reach the North Pole. They left from New York on the Polaris, but once they reached Greenland, things started taking a turn for the worst. They were unable to press on due to the harsh winter storms, and tensions amongst the crew only began to escalate. Mainly, the crew were started questioning Hall's abilities as a captain, and two scientists on board turned on Hall, and coincidentally, Hall fell ill around this time, accusing one of them of poisoning him. He ended up dying soon after. The crew then turned back and began a long, treacherous trip home. Some members of the crew would separate, but despite all odds, many of them were rescued. The body of Charles Francis Hall was left out in the barren, frozen landscape, not to be discovered until many, many years later, in 1968. And it was determined that he had died as a result of a large consumption of arsenic. 
Next on the list is the Jeannette Expedition. In July of 1879, the USS Jeannette departed from San Francisco with 30 through crew on board, led by George W. DeLong, in an attempt to reach the North Pole. But just two months into their journey, the vessel got trapped in ice and drifted for nearly two years before finally sinking in 1881, just north of the Siberian coast. The crew were now stranded on the ice, but attempted to trek across the frozen tundra with sleds. They also had two smaller vessels in tow, which they eventually used to reach the shores of northern Russia. Shockingly, 13 of the 33 men did survive. The other 20 succumbed to the elements and starvation on the journey, including DeLong himself. Self. Number five, the S.A. Andre Expedition. The Andre's Arctic Balloon Expedition took place in 1897, and it was led by Swedish engineer Solomon August Andre. The goal of the expedition was to traverse the Arctic and reach the North Pole by means of a hydrogen balloon. On July 11th, Andre and his two crew members, Nils Strainberg and Knut Frankel, left, lifted off from the Danes Island in the Arctic Ocean. But because of heavy winds, and technical difficulties, the balloon began to drift off course, and they were unable to control their direction and were carried further and further away from their intended destination. And the last known communication from the expedition was on July 13th of that year, when they sent out a distress signal. The fate of the Andre and his crew remained a mystery for over 30 years, until their bodies were discovered in 1930 on White Island. This expedition was doomed to fail. Andre had some experience with air ballooning, but not enough. He'd only taken up the hobby about five years prior to this journey, which probably wasn't enough time to lead a trek far into a particularly dangerous frozen wasteland. In at number four, we have the Brusilov Expedition. The Brusilov Expedition began in August of 1912 and was led by Russian explorer Georgi Brusilov. The aim of the expedition was to explore the uncharted regions of the Arctic and gather scientific data. But the expedition faced a number of problems from the very start. Harsh weather conditions and treacherous ice made progress difficult, and the crew struggled to navigate through the frozen terrain. In fact, they were completely stuck. Their vessel would remain trapped for two whole years, drifting far north with the ice. Valerian Albanov, second in command, requested to take a team out on foot to search for help. His 12-man team began their return journey on makeshift sleds and kayaks, and after a grueling 90-day journey, only Albanov and one other crew member were found and rescued. As for Brusilov and the rest of the crew, they were never seen again. It's believed that the ship eventually sank. The Dyatlov Pass incident. The Dyatlov Pass incident occurred in 1959 in the Ural Mountains of Russia, when a group of nine experienced hikers ventured into the wilderness where they met an incredibly tragic and very mysterious end. The group, led by Igor Dyatlov, set out on their expedition on January 27th, and their journey was expected to take around 16 days to complete. But when no message was received of their arrival at their destination, and days had gone by after they were meant to have returned, their families became concerned and the authorities were contacted. A search party was organized, and on February 26, the hiker's tent was discovered, abandoned, and ripped open from the inside. The bodies of the hikers were found scattered in the snow, some partially clothed and with signs of severe injuries. These included skull fractures, chest trauma, bruising. Two of them were missing their eyes. One had their tongue missing. With how gruesome and mysterious this incident was, wild theories and speculation have circulated for years. Some theories suggest that the hikers were victims of a nuclear testing accident, some kind of government experiment or cover-up perhaps. Maybe the students came across something they weren't supposed to see. And others have more supernatural ideas, like an encounter with a Yeti or aliens. Next on the list is the Ziegler Polar Expedition. This expedition, led by Anthony Fiala, took place in 1903, the ambitious goal of reaching the North Pole. But the expedition was a complete failure. The team encountered harsh 
weather with extreme cold temperatures and treacherous terrain covered in thick ice and snow. And the crew members were ill prepared for the harsh Arctic environment and lacked some of the experience necessary for polar exploration. And this lack of expertise made it difficult for them to navigate through this unforgiving tundra and really hindered their progress. On top of that, the limited supplies they brought with them were insufficient for the duration of this track. As the team continued their journey, they faced setback after setback. Their ship got stuck in ice and then they were completely stranded for two whole years. Surprisingly, this one actually ended as good as it could have though, with the crew eventually being found by a rescue party led by William S. Champ. But finally, we have Peter Tessman and Paul Knutsen. In 1919, Norwegian explorer Roald Amundsen was traversing the northern coast of Russia, along with his partner Peter Tessman and another explorer, Paul Knutsen. Due to Tessman's chronic headaches, he left him to stay behind with Knutsen on Cape Chelyuskin. Their plan was for them to make their way to the nearby town of Dixon, which was just over a month's journey away. But 1920 rolled around and they hadn't arrived yet. A search party was organized by the Norwegian government, but they didn't find anything. And then a Soviet search in 1921 did manage to find a Norwegian sled and a letter from the men stating that they were in good health. In 1922, a Soviet research team discovered the scientific equipment and data that had been left behind with them. And later they found a body wearing a gold watch engraved with Tessim's name within sight of Dixon. It was practically a skeleton at that point, unable to be identified if it weren't for that watch. And the exact cause of death was unclear, but starvation was a possible cause. That and the possibility that he'd seen the lights of the weather station on Dixon Island and began running towards them. And in his weakened state, he possibly slipped and fell, maybe hit his head on a rock, was unable to get up before freezing to death. As for Paul Knutson, his body was never found. With all that said, I've been your host, James. I'll catch you, yes, you specifically, in the next video.